For this CEM review video, we're going to cover motors, pumps, and fans. So let's get started. We're going to cover three different problems in this problem set. We're going to cover a motor efficiency problem, an affinity law problem, and motor slip problem. So first, let's just look at a general overview of a motor and a fan pump system. The input is an electricity to the motor, and then the motor is less than 100% efficient, so we get a little less energy out in terms of brake horsepower. Sometimes it's just called horsepower um, for the motor output. And that is basically a shaft that turns the fan or the pump. And the output of the fan and the pump is the moving air, moving water, which we measure using terms called air horsepower and water horsepower. So here are some of the equations that, that you use um, often when you're working with fans and motors and pumps um, in the different efficiencies and whatnot. So this is just sort of a nice little uh, cheat sheet you can use. So let's first look at a motor efficiency problem. So in this case, a 100 horsepower motor is running at 70% load and an 88% efficiency. A new 100 horsepower energy efficiency motor can be purchased that will run at 90% efficiency at the same loading, 70%. What is the savings in input electrical power? So this one's relatively easy. The only really trick to this one that's a little bit, might be a little bit different is that uh, you want to make sure that you take into account how much it's loaded. So that's what the 0.7 um, is here. So this is basically 100 horsepower was what it would output at full loading or 100% loading. So it outputs 0.7 of that um, or 70 horsepower. And then you're just dividing the output of the motor by the input or by the, I'm sorry, by the efficiency, and that gives you the input, and then you're converting kilowatts to horsepower using this unit conversion factor. So um, then you get 59.3 kilowatts is what the original motor uses, and then you look at the 90% efficient motor. It's not that big of a jump in efficiency, so um, you actually drop your power usage to 58, and it's asking what is the savings in input electric power, so you have to subtract the two, which is 1.3 kilowatts. All right, let's look at the next problem. So before we look at the next problem, I just want to review the affinity laws. So the affinity laws basically are, um, you can relate, you can see what the different operating conditions are at different speeds, but what's nice is with these top two ones, the different speeds correlate exactly to um, different CFM flow or different GPM flow. So wherever you see, you know, this here's the static pressure equation in terms of RPM2 and RPM1. Whenever you see that, you can replace RPM2 over RPM1 with CFM2 over CFM1 or GPM2 over GPM1. And the same thing with the horsepower. So these are the equations you use when um, you are looking at fans or pumps operating at different speeds. So this is just an equation. Um, this You wouldn't get this full probably problem on the CM exam, but you could get pieces of it. And this is, I just wanted to share the whole thing because you probably could get any one of these A through E um, questions here. So a five horsepower air handler provides a volume flow rate of 11,500 CFM when the speed of the fan pulley is 1,100 RPM. The plant manager recommends decreasing the flow rate to 10,000 CFM by changing the diameter of the fan pulley. The existing static pressure and BHP are as shown to the right. Use the fan laws to complete the table and find the following values. So I'm not going to complete the table, but I'm just going to find the values here. So the first one is what is the um, fan speed of the proposed system? So we use the fact that um, this, you know, we use this affinity law and we plug in the values and solve for x, and the new speed would be 957 RPM. What's the static pressure? Do the same thing, except here we use this affinity law, and again, solve for x. Same thing with the brake horsepower. And then what's the load factor of the existing system? Well, if we have a, um, you know, if we know our brake horsepower is 4.5 and our, um, in this case, our horsepower is 5 here, then we can calculate the load factor. And then our new, our new, um, crap. Oh, 
So we now know that our, so what is the load factor of the existing system? Well, the load factor is basically the brake horsepower or what the motor is running at over the nameplate. The nameplate's five and we know from our table um, the brake horsepower is four and a half, so that's how we get the load factor. And then the load factor of the proposed system is basically we're lowering from part C, we're lowering our horsepower to three, so we use the same formula and it's 60%. Okay, so motor slip. So motor slip is a way to basically measure um, the how uh, much the motor, how much a motor is loaded. And usually you are using a um, tachometer, which is measuring RPM. So um, in this case, an energy audit is performed on a 250 horsepower motor. The motor speed was measured at 1780 RPM with a non-contact tachometer. The nameplate lists the power factor as 0.91, service factor is one, as 1 1.2, RPM is 1765, and the voltage is 460 volts. How much is the motor loaded? So it turns out that there's actually a good bit of um, extra information in here. You don't need um, the 250 horsepower, you don't need the power factor or the service factor, and you don't need the voltage. All you need is the RPM values here, so the 1780 RPM and the 1765. So let me just um, give a quick um, overview of motor slip just so you get the general idea. So the idea is that um, if a motor has nothing hooked up to it, it's going to run at one of these synchronous speeds, depending on the design, and the design aspect is the number of poles. But basically, it's going to run at one of these speeds, either 3600 RPM all the way down to 720. So, and what happens is, is as you put, you know, a fan or a pump or something on the end of the motor, it's going to start slowing down a little bit. Um, so, so the idea is it's just, it doesn't slow down a ridiculous amount. In this case, um, it, we know that since we're close to 1800, that's the synchronous speed. So 1800 is the synchronous speed. And all that means, or how you can tell that, is you just look at the RPMs and you pick the one that's um, above that um, only by a little bit. So we're not going to pick 3600. We're going to pick the one that's next above it. So if it was 1150 RPM, then you would choose the 1200 for the synchronous speed. So this table is a nice thing to have in reference when you um, are taking the CEM. So let's let's now let's talk about how you figure out load factor from that. So you basically are um, something. It's, this is called the slip method, and it's how much it slips at at um, you know versus there's a slip at part load and there's a slip at full load. That's what that's what these two are measuring here. So we take the synchronous speed, which is the 1800. We subtract what the measured or part load speed is, which is we measured it at 1780, and then that's the numerator, and the bottom is the synchronous speed minus the full load speed, and that's normally what's listed um, on the nameplate, um, which is 17, 1765. And then we take the ratio of those two, and we find that it's 57% loaded. So if for if it asked what horsepower the motor was outputting, you would take this 57% and multiply by the 250 HP. So those are the motor and pump and fan problems. Thanks for watching.